My Seven Chakras, Episode 249. As you go out, so shall you come in. The Seven Chakras, swirling vortices of energy, positioned throughout our body, from the base of the spine to the crown of the head. For thousands of years, this ancient wisdom has been passed on from master to disciple. What are the functions of these energy centers? And could these chakras help you unlock your destiny and find your true purpose? Welcome to My 7 Chakras. And now, your host, Aditya Jai Kumar. What's up, Action Tribe? AJ here, founder and host of My 7 Chakras, the show where we always have the conversations that are going to help you to heal spiritually, emotionally, mentally, and physically. So if you're new to this podcast, then I must assure you that you are in the right corner of this digital universe. Since I'm welcoming you to this show, I'd like to also invite you to the official Facebook community, Facebook group of Action Tribe, which is a supportive tribe of people who will hold space for you, support you on your journey, share resources, and hold you accountable to taking action in your life because let's face it sometimes in life you don't need more information right google and bing will provide you more information but what you need is a community a supportive community and what you need is action tribe so if you want to join our highly driven community of action takers then request your membership at www.my7chakras.com forward slash tribe that's my seven seven is a word my seven chakras.com forward slash tribe and uh, once you do that then you'll get approved and I'll see you inside the group. And with that out of the way, it's time for me to introduce you to our special guest for today, Tony Green. So, Tony Green, are you ready to inspire? Oh, I absolutely am, AJ. Wonderful. So, Tony Green is a world-renowned psychic medium. She hosts many radio and TV shows. Some of them include Create a Life You Love, Psychic Medium Tony G, and Messages from Above. She's also an author, and she has written five books so tony thank you for joining me on today's show it's absolutely my pleasure thank you so much for having me it's such an honor so uh tony uh we usually begin our show in fact we always begin our show with some inspiration so what is your favorite inspirational quote and tell us how you apply that quote in your life absolutely so my favorite inspirational quote was actually channeled to me during a healing one day And uh, I was giving somebody else a healing. It's as you go out, so shall you come in. And that to me meant whatever we do in this life, wherever we leave, however we are when we leave, we're going to come back in that same state or place. So from that moment on, I did everything I could to just start evolving my life. Um, Mm. mending relationships and friendships because I thought, oh, I don't want to have to come back and redo some of this. Mm. So let's fix it now. Uh, So that is absolutely my favorite quote out of all. There is one more that I love. If you don't go within, you will go without. And again, that was channeled to me. Mm -hmm. And I knew that meant we have to cultivate the spirit what's inside of us as much as we cultivate and work on what's outside of us. Got it. Thanks a lot for sharing Action Tribe. I hope you're listening. As you go out, so shall you come in. And the way I look at it is, you know, how you start your day, right? The way you go out from your doorstep and you begin your day uh, determines how your day uh, continues and how people react to you and how you react to the circumstances that you find yourself in and that's how your day progresses and so shall you come in that's how you will you know when you're coming back home that's how you're going to feel so the point that i'm trying to understand or i'm trying to make here is that start your day Uh, the way you want it to. And that's why the morning routine comes into play. And that's why I ask this question at the end of every episode. So thanks a lot for sharing, Tony. Thank you. It was my pleasure. Absolutely. So with that, let's dive in. Uh, Tony, how did you first know that you had these psychic abilities? Um, You know, I've had them for as long as I can remember. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't aware I had them. I would go to psychics and they would not read for me. They Well, they were actually tarot card readers and they'd flip a few cards and then they'd look at me and they'd just stop and start a conversation with me. And I never knew why I was paying just to 
have somebody talk to me. I'm like, why won't they give me a reading? Mm. Well, finally, one psych, one tarot reader said, but, but you do this. You're a psychic. And I kept saying, no, 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 I, I can't do that. Cause I'd only been familiar with the tarot cards. Right. Um, and then I started doing the healing and the hypnosis work, but my clients would come in and all these messages would just blur right out of my mouth for them. I would be saying, you need to do this. You need to, do, I, I, things I could never know about their lives right. would just start coming out and I would be giving them the messages, um, which was not abnormal for me because that's what I did, you know, even in, in my childhood, as far back as I can remember. Um, so it was it was not uh, un- uncomfortable or weird for me to blurb things about people's lives out of my mouth, mm. and then people just started making appointments and coming back just for the 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 questions. They just had more questions they wanted right. answered. So then I would just start that I just started booking those appointments for those uh, for for readings, if you will. Got it. Got it. So. Talk to us about when was the first time you communicated with someone from the other side? What was that experience uh, like? <laughs> probably. Well, I, I'm going to be really honest. The intentional one was probably long after um, after I had been doing it for a very long time. Because mm-hmm. as a child, I would just always be talking in my head, which I realize now right. was me talking to uh, the, the other side, spirit or whatever, you know, you want to call it. Yeah. But my first intentional experience was really like very tingly and exciting mm-hmm. and very enlightening. Because the, when you're talking to pureness, all of their, whatever they tell you is going to be felt. Okay. You're going to feel it. And, um, and I, it, it was just one of my most uh, exciting experiences uh, mm-hmm. in my life. But yeah, it, it was very, very good. <laughs> and it was a great conversation too about uh, how I could... Um, it kind of start evolving my life and and let right. go of the past. Got it, got it. So you said that you you said that you felt a bit tingly, uh, uh, and, and you said that it was a wonderful experience, and you did receive some advice about the future. So do you know who this you know being or entity was? Yeah. Um. So I can't. I can I can't say the name of the yep. being because I can't pronounce it. Right. I don't have that dialect. Okay. But I, I am aware of who they are, and they've been with me my entire life, um, and they have always uh, been there um, to to guide me and help me and, and send messages forth, if you will, to channel yeah. messages forth. So, sure. yes, I do know who they are. No, I cannot pronounce their name, <laughs> but they're always, a, it's never like we think of a, a guide or a, a channel as one specific, like us, a specific person. But on the other side, there's no flesh there. It's a group of light beings that oh. bring information through us for the greater good of this uh, c- community. And they call it the community, but it's really the world. Sure. Sure. Like similar to Esther Hicks, because I think yes. it's not one person, right? In that case, it's they. Right, they. Now, Ooh. I want to tell you, the first, what I was watching Esther Hicks, mm. I all of a sudden it clicked. I went, oh my gosh, Makes I sense. do that. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> I do, that's what I do. Right, right. Mm. So, yes, I love her, by the way. Love her. Got it. So, you had that experience. So, what happened after that? Did you have more experiences? Did more, you know, entities come yes. uh, in touch with you? Yes. Well, usually it's the same group unless I'm working with somebody else. Then their group, their, oh, their okay. uh, what I call sometimes a pod uh, because it's a big light cluster. So I call them a pod or um, their group of uh, guides will come through and give messages for them. And, mm. you know, people always ask, what do, what's their name? What do I call them? I'm like, it, it really, seriously, it doesn't matter. They don't care. They don't have ego. They're not attached to what they're called. Yeah. They're more attached to what you're doing and how you're doing it and how you're supposed to be doing it and just helping you to evolve to the greatest, highest place you can with happiness and joy 
in this existence. Right. It makes sense because I think from where they are from, uh, I mean, on this plane, we give so much value to words and diction and, you know, or how we speak. But sound to them is such a small uh, aspect of the entire energetic spectrum, right? So it's not only sound, but it's also, uh, I guess, visual light. And that's all we see. But they feel, hear, see so many things beyond what we can even perceive in that other realm uh, so so yeah. so so tell us what exactly is channeling i'm sure many of our listeners who are tuning in right now who are new to this topic might be wondering okay so for me channeling and um everybody has different different practitioners have different um definitions for channeling but for me channeling is when the higher beings um kind of uh use my mouth to say their words, <laughs> to get their messages out. Um, and that probably sounds just a little creepier than it is because it's really not creepy. Uh, sometimes when I just purely channel, these messages come out. And it's, I, I, I always have to tell people, I don't hear words. It's not like I hear voices. It just comes right through me and out my mouth. And sometimes I'm even surprised at what comes out of my mouth. Oh. Uh, Yes, because I don't know. It's not like they send me a download. Okay, this is the speech you're going to give. All of a yeah. sudden, it's it's just happening. The words are coming out. Sometimes my um my voice will get softer. Sometimes it goes really fast and robotic, depending on 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 the message that they're bringing through. Um, it, it's it's really quite even for me. I find it quite uh, just splendid and amazing and. And just simply beautiful. Yeah. Got it. So are you, you know, are you consciously aware while this is happening? Yes. Or is it when the session gets over, you come back to, you know, yourself, no. so to speak? No. <laughs> okay. yeah, the beautiful thing is, and I'm, I'm so blessed that I am aware because every message that goes out for everyone in the room or the particular person I'm I'm talking to you, um, every message I get to hear to you and I get to feel it. Um, every once in a while, something will start to come through and I'll say, if it's being said in a way that is, um, let's say I'm one-on-one -on -one with somebody and, and they're not uh, listening to their guides appropriately, every once in a while they'll try to uh, sneak something very poignant and harsh and I'll say, no, 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 we need to rephrase that. Um, cause I'll feel that energy coming in. I'm like with love and kindness is the best way. And they usually do, but sometimes the person in front of me needs that very direct demanding right. message. And so then it comes out and it's funny and everybody laughs and, uh, but yeah, it's, it, it is just a be beautiful thing that I do get to be aware and I do get to be, um, uh, part of mm -hmm. the receiving as well as the giving. So, yeah. Nice, nice. Now, you shared your first experience, uh, you know, personally, right, of uh, communicating with uh, an entity on the other yes. side. Yes. Now, can you talk to us about your most memorable channeling experience where you sort of worked with someone else or maybe with a group, something that really uh, was memorable for you? Okay. Um, you know, if, if you don't mind, one, I'm going to, this story was really is really changed everything for me. And okay. it, it was, and it, I was alone, but if you don't mind, I would love to share this story because I think every single person has this capability and can do this. And I want them to um, respond differently than I did. So I was one night uh, in bed and I was praying and um, I had been seeing this blue, what we call an orb, a blue light. Right. And it, it was probably at least six inches in diameter. And every time I would say to this light, who are you? Because um, I had seen, um, you know, people from the other side. I had seen uh, earthbounds. I had seen a lot of things by this point, but this blue light was new to me. Mm -hmm. So I said, um, I, I would say, why are you here? And the, I would hear love. And then my body would just feel this unconditional love and tears would just come out of my eyes. Right. And then one night I thought I was really brave and I was talking to this blue light. And I said, um, 
and again, be, being in bed and, and praying and, and communicating with this blue light or orb. And I said, show yourself to me. And it started to open and it was higher than the ceiling and lower than the floor. It was massive in size. And AJ, this really brave soul who had seen earthbound spirits and everything else just covered her face and waited for it. Mm. I became afraid in that moment because, you know, that magnificence was so much for me. And I just covered my head and because mm. I didn't know what would come next. I really wish I hadn't of So I just seriously, if you ever have that experience, embrace it. Um, I've been trying to do that again and haven't been able to accomplish it since. Mm. So they keep saying, you're still not ready. I'm like, no, no, no. I promise I am now. Was it, was, what was it? Is, I mean, I know I you closed your eyes was, at some point, but. <laughs> I believe it was a light being, one of the light beings that communicates through me. Um, and to some of my clients that come in, they'll say, oh my gosh, I see this brilliant blue light next to you. Because many of my clients are, um, are also intuitive. So they'll say, I see this brilliant blue light next to you. I'm like, yeah, that's my, that's, that's the group. That's who they are. That's who's uh, communicating these messages for mm. you. So um, I believe some people would call it an angel or a light being or guides. Um, but I know it was a higher being. I definitely know that it, it was pure love and a higher being. So, got it, got it. Yes. Now, now, Tony, many of our listeners, people who regularly listen to the show, they believe that they have psychic abilities. Maybe they've had certain experiences that they quite, can't quite explain, like yourself, or perhaps they feel it deep within, in their body and mm -hmm. in their mind. So how does a person increase or strengthen this psychic ability? Do okay. you have any advice? Absolutely. So I believe everybody is born and connected to the other side. It's only through time here on this plane when we embrace the physical and we let go of the non-physical that we start to lose that connection to the mm -hmm. other side. Okay. And we start, and some people have, you know, as children, we see a lot of spirits. That's why so many children, especially like up to the age of 12, want to go sleep in their mommy and daddy's bed okay. because they're seeing things at night. And, you know, there's a song that says the freaks come out at night. Well, I say the ghosts come out at night, <laughs> the ghosties. <laughs> yes. So, um, so, and then our parents out of frustration and just not knowing in the past have said, that's not real. You're just imagining that. Or so the, the children shut it down from that, or they shut it down from the fear of not understanding why or what that is. Mm -hmm. Now, it can be reopened, but that fear, you have to let go of that fear. If it was shut down because of fear, it has to be let, let go of. So many of us are taught that in, in the Western hemisphere, at least in this, in the, in the U.S., that if you see things like that, you're probably crazy, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we're, we're having a spiritual turnabout here and we are beginning to be in that space where it is acceptable to say, I see I see people from the other side. Um, yeah. But there is a, a great deal of people who are still the thought of the, of the thought that that's bad and it's wrong and, and you don't know they could whatever. There's a lot of fear involved. So letting go of that fear and letting your heart guide you through it, this is a feeling planet. Mm -hmm. This is, and what we feel is what we create. And fear shuts it down, love opens it up. So if you connect with your heart, you are going to connect. So Action Drive, I hope you have received some advice from this. It's all about tapping into the healing, therapeutic, uh, open expanse of your heart and really working on letting go of those fears that have subconsciously sunken in to your mind, maybe from some experience that you had as a kid. Now, uh, Tony, you've written about earthbound spirits and you spoke about it a while back. Um, what exactly are earthbound spirits? Okay. So, um, <clears throat> typically when a person leaves their physical body for the last time, 
Okay. They go through the tunnel and they end up back what we call home or heaven. It's another plane that runs parallel with ours that is about four feet off the ground, three to four feet off our our ground. Okay. Okay. Now, a spirit that has not gone home or to heaven is a spirit that you will see firmly planted on the floor. If their feet are on our floor, they haven't evolved to that next plane yet. Mm -hmm. And that earthbound spirit, um, and and I know some people believe you're either pulled up or you're pulled down. And, and that's okay. You can have your beliefs. And I'm not here to change anyone's beliefs. I can just explain what I have personally experienced. That spirit that is floor bound has not embraced what we call the light yet to go through that tunnel to okay. end up back in that um, next dimension. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and there are ways to help them go home. There are. Right. But usually if they stay they're they're a little mischievous. <laughs> Uh-huh. They're, they're, they they've stayed for earthly reasons, physical reasons, um, okay. and they need to get back to that spiritual plane. But you know, back in the day, you have to think, especially in in our Western Hemisphere, there's mm-hmm. damnation, and everybody's being damned because there is none of us that have not sinned. Mm-hmm. So, so they don't understand. Everybody goes home. Everybody goes back to heaven. It, whatever you call it, everybody goes there. There is no al- alternate route. <laughs> there is no detour. Yeah. We all go home, no matter what. Got it. Now, 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 you spoke about these earth-bound uh, spirits and Correct. the fact that they can be mischievous. Uh, they haven't accepted a light because of which they can't move to the other to the, to the next level, so to speak. Uh, now, going back to uh, these light beings that you speak about, you spoke about mm-hmm. light beings can be either your spirit guides or your angels, right? So could you talk to us about, you know, are there any differences between, you know, your spirit guides and then the angels? Because what I've heard is angels are on a on a different level, right? They're more ascended, yes, so to speak. A- absolutely. So, okay. So I just, yeah, that's such a great question. And I was doing a party the other two nights ago and somebody yeah. asked the, this exact question. They said, um, What's the difference between your guides and angelic beings? And yeah. um, angelic beings, my understanding is they have always been angelic beings. They did not have to ascend to that point. They've just always been these very non-egoic forms of pure love that are there to guide not only our plane, but every plane mm-hmm. in evolving. Okay. It, to, to guide each and every one of us as well as our what, what we call our planet as well and to make sure uh, that we are safe and that we survive. Okay, makes sense. So, so whereas the other beings, right. I'm guessing, they, they are graduating from level to level? And they, they, and they also, their, their goal is more specific. They don't have that inter- Although they want peace and they want uh, interplanetary peace and the yeah. planet to survive, their goal is more specific to the people or a person or a group uh. of souls. Like they may, like it's my understanding that from your first existence to your last existence, you have the same guides mm-hmm. with you. Now, your angels, some of them are the same ones, but some of them swap out too. Like at a time when you need protection, these angels will step in at a time when you need uh, uh, something else, health or healing, a difference that can step in, but your guides know your life plan throughout and they work with Mm -hmm. you throughout to get there. But again, they are non egoic beings. They could not have an ego and be a guide. Got it. Now, now, Tony, uh, let's talk about the journey and the evolution of a soul, of the soul, so to speak. Uh, we were having a discussion in our Facebook group the other day about old and young souls, right? So firstly, uh, do you believe in this distinction that there are old souls and then there are new souls? And if yes, what are they? 
Okay, so I'm going to really throw a wrench in this because the guidance I'm getting right now is that um, souls may have been around forever and these young souls that they say are coming in are very evolved and very enlightened. And the way I would like to take this uh, comment and and help people understand it a little yeah. better is this way. We all come from different planes. There are higher planes and lower planes or planets, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, so some of the souls that are coming in now are coming in to help this particular plane evolve to a higher energy. Mm -hmm. So they're coming from higher planes and they might not be as used to this plane or the, how do I say this? They're not as used to, they're a new energy to this plane, but they have been in existence before. But they, they, they are coming in these, a new soul would not be as enlightened as some of these souls that are coming in. A new soul would be very naive and, and unknowing. But I believe that all souls have been uh, since inception in one way or another. Right, right, right. So when you say souls, you mean f physical beings on earth who have these old or new souls, correct? Correct, correct. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you actually confirmed my dilemma because that was one of the questions I had was, you know, if you have a new and old soul, then the assumption would be that uh, at some point, the new soul was born, right? That's what differentiates old versus new. And if it was born or created, what was the soul before this process of being born? You know, right. but they, I think you, you, you've, 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 you, you told that these are new souls because they are from another plane and they are new to this plane. Correct. 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 Wonderful. So that makes complete sense. <laughs> That's why. And, yeah, and, and if I might point out, yeah. um, AJ, I don't know your age, but even when I was in high school, we were still on typewriters and not computers. So yeah. these souls that are coming in are electronic ready. They're evolution ready. During my childhood, personally, there was not a lot of electronic advancement, computer advancement. But there are, there is now. You might get a lot of chatter about this on your page. There yeah. are, there are beings from higher planes that are coming in and helping us. And Steve Jobs is a perfect example of this. He was a perfect channel or conduit of a being that came in. And helped with electronic advancement and um, intelligence on this plane to help our uh, everything from just being able to, to have these phones and these computers to interplanetary communication, which is a lot. We are the people in general on this plane aren't as aware of that as others are. Um, mm -hmm. maybe the higher up government branches, governmental branches, but I'm yeah. going to tell you that there's a reason and we should not fear this, but there is a reason why we are having so much advancement in the technological, um, area. And these, these new souls, as they call them, are coming from these planes ready for these advancements and to take them to the next mm -hmm. steps. Mm -hmm. Now, now here's the, the other question that I have, you know, sometimes you ha might have, you know, new souls coming in into new bodies, but what about the other way around? What if, what if you have an, an old body who's been on this earth for a while, but is a new soul and a new body, someone who's just been born with an old soul, does, does, does that happen a lot? And, uh, okay. you know, what's so, the difference? Yeah. So, okay. Um, repeating souls or an old soul, somebody who has incarnated many times, let's just put it that way for the sake of, yeah. can, can come back in a new body to keep um, learning and growing. And they can come to this plane and they will continue to learn and grow. And they will continue to what they're calling expand. Okay. Now, if a new soul is in an old body, well, the soul would have had to been with that body since the beginning. So it would have been a new soul in a new body in the beginning, correct? Is that yeah. correct? Does that make sense to you? 
At some because, point, yes. Because your your soul is with your physical being through your existence on this plane. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, uh, you, your soul is guided again, but your guides have been with you from your first incarnation to your last. Is my yeah. understanding. So I hope does that answer that? Did that make sense? To it you? does. Okay, good. It does. It does. Uh, no, no. Obviously, we spoke about the fact that you know your 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 spirit guides are with you all throughout. Uh, you know your soul is essentially uh, moving from one body to the other and evolving and learning and growing, and that's how a new soul becomes an, a comparatively old soul. So my question to you is, what's the end goal? Have you thought about this? What yeah. does the cycle? When does the cycle of rebirth end, and and what happens after that? Okay, so okay. Well, I I've had three near death experiences. So, mm -hmm. um, two of them, I don't know what happened. It was, it, it wasn't that experience of going home to the light and coming back. Um, okay. but the third one, I started to go home to the light. So as soon as I left my body, there was nothing but this feeling of pure love and everything is okay. And there's nothing to worry about. Right. It was, mm -hmm. it was the most amazing feeling. So when we leave our physical body, we go back to our, our soul group. We have a group of souls that we, we, uh, learn and grow with and from throughout okay. our existence. And that's why we meet people that are so familiar to us. They become our best friends or we see that person that we fall in love with and we're like, it's like I've known you before. Yes. Um, it's because our souls have known each other for a very, very, very long time. Um, now, it's also my understanding that we each have a book that was written millennia ago, and we're playing out that book. Now, we can choose. It's my understanding. We can choose how quick, quickly we incarnate to our next chapter, if you will, in that book yeah. or life. But at any point, we can say, I, I, it's my understanding, at any point, we can say, I can't, I don't, I, I won't, I won't jump back in. However, when we're on the other side, we're nothing but love and power, and we feel like, oh, I can handle this. Mm. <laughs> and we, we look at it, and we look at the, the, this chapter or this life coming up, and we say, yeah, I can do that. No problem. I've got this. And we jump in and we're like, oh, wait, I yeah. forgot about all the restraints with this flesh um, uh, and how people don't listen and how maybe I cannot teach them or how it will not work out this time. Um, but mm -hmm. the end game eventually is that we will. And I want everybody to really comprehend this. Love is not something you give or receive. Love is the essence of your being that is supposed to be at all times. And, and, and the, I'm actually channeling a little bit right now, right here. And also, the amount of love that you have for yourself, within yourself, that you carry at any time is the amount of love that you can give to any other individual, as well as the amount of love that you can receive from any other individual so to the extent that you are love you will experience love the end game is to be able to remain pure love to be love from beginning to end that unconditional love from beginning to end with no judgment no forethought no concern of fear whatsoever and that is the end game once we have a, accomplished that once we have achieved that at that point and at that point only will we be able to move to the very next uh high higher up level if you will mm -hmm. okay does, does that does that answer that question for you i hope it does oh it does it does uh it it, it does it does answer it but then, then you move on to the next level, right? But when you move to the next level, do you stop manifesting on Earth? You can. Or, you... you can. Now, now, see, Earth is a very physical plane, as you, yep. do, as you do understand. So every time you incarnate, you have to go through those steps of letting Correct. go of that physicalness and the uh, egoic self or fear. Yeah. So if you can incarnate and remain love, you do not have to come back to this plane but we mm -hmm. sometimes choose to because those souls that we are in group with we want to come back and 
we want to guide and help them okay. achieve this level. Got it. Thanks a lot for sharing, uh, Tony. I'm sure many of our listeners are taking notes or maybe having these aha moments as you share these stories. You know, the journey never ends, right? We're always learning and, and, yeah. and finding out more of who we are um, and, and pushing away of what we are not. Uh, but based on what you've shared today, what is that one action step that you'd like to recommend for our listeners? Be aware of yourself. Don't worry so much about what everybody else is doing and saying and being. Kind of do some self-analyzation with understanding. Don't judge yourself. Understand where you are, why you're here, what brought you here. Because in understanding the self, you then understand everybody else's path on this life. Remember, we are all here on a journey. And when you understand who you are, in that moment, you understand everyone else on this plane. So I should drive to read the entire show notes for today's episode, including the quote that was shared in the beginning, the book recommendation, and certain nuggets of wisdom that you might not have managed to note down. Then visit my 7 forward slash 249. That's the episode number, my 7 forward slash 249. We're just one episode away from a 250. Don't struggle, go with the flow of things and you will find yourself at one with the mysterious unity of the universe. This is an amazing quote by Chung Zhu and it goes in line with the theme that we're talking about today, which is not about struggling, but you know, just being love. Action Tribe, if you are going through a challenging phase in your life right now, don't worry. This is just a phase. Don't struggle because that will only lead to wastage of your energy. Instead, become mindful of the situation that you are in raise your vibrations go with the flow of things find someone who can help you or assist you and take one small step at a time towards overcoming this challenging situation the key as this quote states is to become one with the vibrations of the universe because once you do the mystical spirit of the universe will come to your rescue so tony talk to us about one challenge that you had to go through in your life what was the challenge like and how did you overcome it how did you get out of the situation okay so there are so many challenges i could share but the one i want to share today is it happened um i think in 06 where i was practicing to be a magician's assistant Mm -hmm. (laughs) and he knocked me off the magic box (laughs) literally, and landed on top of me. And when he jumped up off of me, he twisted off of my ankle. And um, in the fall, my head hit the cement, bounced up and hit the cement again. Now, that was the experience, my third near death, where I started to go through the tunnel again. And um, he shattered, he was quite a big gentleman and he um when he twisted off my ankle it was shattered and all the work i had been doing at that time was physical i was Mm -hmm. teaching spinning classes and yoga and cardio boot camp and i was really uh, into that um all of my work was physical so i had to have surgery and get 13 pins and two plates in my ankle i couldn't I couldn't work, AJ. I couldn't. Mm -hmm. And uh, plus from the hit on the head, from hitting my head on the cement, I had um, severe vertigo. Like every time I stood up, the room would spin and shake and the vibration of it was so, and I would have the, anybody who has had severe vertigo knows about the nausea also. And so it, this struggle, I, During this time, I had to embrace that I could no longer do the work I was doing, which, by the way, brought me to the work that I am doing. It put me Mm -hmm. in my proper purpose for the time that I am in. And we can have several purposes in this life. And it helped me to push me to this work and getting completely immersed in it. Now, I I have a pretty good resume. I had been in promotions and marketing, and I was sending out resumes. They weren't even acknowledging that they had received the resumes. Mm -hmm. And my guidance at the time was, be still, be peace, 
And instead, I was getting more um, nervous and angry, which just prolonged everything. So being still and being peace is very imperative if you're going through a struggle because they they cannot get, you know, somebody who is a, a vibration of love has a more difficult time getting through the vi- vibration of anger and fear. If you are still and in peace and accept every moment as it is, that information will come right to you that you need and what you need to do next. Um, and we all all had that. But um, I came through it by uh, starting the work that I do now. And once I started this work, it was like ready, set, go. Here we here we are. So um, yeah, that was one of my uh, biggest struggles. Now, I will say this, AJ, if you, uh, when we are, when we, and in this case, it's literal. When we are knocked down or taken out of the place that we are, it is always for our highest good. They don't take something away unless they have something better for you. So don't look at what you no longer have. Look at what's being placed in front of you because it might just be everything you have been asking for and more. Got it, got it. This is a really wonderful story, inspiring story that you've shared with us. In just one sentence, what is that one major life lesson that you'd like to share with our community? Oh, gosh. Uh, That is a great question. And I'm going to say what you said earlier, go with the flow and you will grow. So I should try. I hope you are listening and you might note that whatever we do on this episode is all about helping you go with the flow helping you raise your vibrations one step at a time. So if you're not there yet, don't worry. You're getting there. Uh, I love your story, Tony. Like you mentioned, uh, in 06, 2006, you were practicing to be, or you were the assistant of a magician, and uh, you, you had an accident where you twisted your ankle. It was shattered. You had to get surgery. And at you know at some point during that year you also hit your head in the cement which led to issues like vertigo, nausea, and inability to balance. And I, I'm sure the combination of both of them really made your life very very challenging. Um, you know, and 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 I had a road accident many years back, and I can imagine what a challenge it is, um, and 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 traumatic as well. So. At that point, as far as your career is concerned, you had to take a decision for your career. Uh, you wanted, you had to make a change. Uh, but initially, when you tried sending your in your resumes, you did not have much luck until you realized that the goal and the solution is to just be still and to be at peace. Uh, and 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 it's amazing to note that you were able to make this shift in your career and what you're doing from all about being physical to now. It you know it's all. Uh, psychic and non-physical and spiritual so so that is amazing really inspiring and the reason why it's inspiring is because many of our listeners are in this transitional phase right now and unfortunately some of our listeners have lost their job recently uh, because of one reason or the other and when you've lost your job when things are taken away from you sometimes you're lost but you've mm-hmm. you know effectively shared with us that if something is taken away from you whether it's your job or your health or your relationships, if something is taken away, it usually means that something even more better, even more special is coming your way. So thanks a lot for sharing. Absolutely. And if I might say, um, you know, God or heaven or the angels, you know, they use this, they channel this uh, quote to me all the time, by choice or by force. You know when you have the choice. When things are not working out well, you're being given the choice to take action on your own. And if you don't, they will force you into it. Each and every single one of us has a purpose to fulfill. But we have fear with that. Let go of the fear and enjoy the ride. So enjoy the ride, Action Tribe. I hope you enjoyed today's session about mediumship and channeling if you like the episode then make sure you hit that social media share button whether it's facebook or twitter and we still have our last round for the day left so don't leave us just yet but before moving on to the next round i've got a message for you on a scale of one to ten how happy are you right now are you a two which means a bit sad or depressed or are you a ten which means you're extremely happy you're grateful you're abundant 
or are you a five which means that you're just indifferent right so whatever your happiness level is just imagine the number in front of you in front of your eyes just imagine it and if it's a lower number I have a way by which you can immediately feel much more happier. Now, this method was shared thousands of years ago by a philosopher named Lao Tzu. And what did he say? Well, here's what he said. Be content with what you have. Rejoice in the way things are. And when you realize that there is nothing lacking, the whole world belongs to to you because it's true action tribe you've come a very long way you've gone through many challenges in your life and you're still alive if you're listening to this episode and that this too shall pass and you are going to triumphantly pass this phase as well but you must realize that there's nothing lacking in your life because when you realize that then the whole world is truly yours as Lao Tzu said and with that Tony we are now at the last round for today which is called the wisdom round Are you ready? I am. Great. So what is the best advice that someone has ever given you? Is uh, It's none of my business what other people think of me. Don't invest in their opinion of me, whether it be good or bad. Cool. Name one personal habit that keeps you going. I focus on my light. Uh, and do you have a morning routine, something that you do regularly in the morning? Yes. Every morning I wake up, the first thing I do is I make my uh, green drink and then I sit down and I figure out my day the way I need it to be to be the most productive. That is that is super important. I don't have uh, green drinks yet. But that <laughs> is something that is on my list. And of course, you know, it's so amazing to just be able to plan your day, have that focus and that intention of what you're going to do, because you won't believe once you do that, you have that list of not too many things, just a few things uh, to do. Your day will be much more effective and productive. Now, Tony, name a book that you'd like to recommend for our listeners. Absolutely. Now, I'm going to recommend this book. I listened to this book, and I literally shifted listening to this book. And I hope the listeners, I hope everybody has the same experience. Co-creating with the best. Co-creating with the best. Okay. And it's done by Dr. Wayne Dyer and Esther Hicks. You just can't go wrong with that. You just can't. Is it a is it an audible? It is. It's a session. It's a live session that they did with people. So it's not necessarily a book, but Wayne Dyer gets to uh, ask Abraham, the group Abraham, questions. And there's so much love and light and inspiration. Your vibration shifts while you listen to this. That's amazing. You know, I yesterday was just looking for some books to read because I'm absolutely loving Audible. Yes. Uh, and I've got this wish list and I was like, what book to read? And I spent like 45 minutes after listen, you know, preparing for our episode today, just going through audible and seeing what book to to listen to so i'm going to add this to my list action tribe uh there's a way by which you can get this book for free uh, and the way uh, and the reason for that is because uh, audible is offering our listeners one free audiobook with a free 30 day trial you know you can get out get to check out their service try it out they've got loads of titles in fact 180,000 titles to choose from for your various devices and since tony has listened to this book it means it is already there co-creating with the best by dr wayne dyer to get your free book go to my seven chakras.com forward slash free book that's my seven chakras.com forward slash free book and start listening to the book so tony thank you so much for joining us today before you go tell us one thing that you're grateful for and how can we find you online? Absolutely. Thank you. And it's such an honor to be here. Thank you again, AJ. The one thing that I'm so grateful for, and a lot of people don't take time to say this, it's my life. It's it's the my life and the way I'm using it now to help others evolve on this plane. That's my purpose. It's my passion. And I'm so grateful and blessed to be able to do that. And if people want to reach out to me. Um, my website is T-O-N-I G dot I-N-F-O Tony G dot info. So there you go Action Tribe to learn more about Tony you can go to Tony G dot info um, 
And like I said earlier, if you want to be a part of our community, then my seven chakras.com forward slash tribe, because like we're learning today, information is great. But as humans, we want that feeling of connection and love and that you get through a community. So to learn more about Tony, Tony G dot info to be a part of our community. If you are not already my seven chakras.com forward slash tribe. So Tony, thank you so much for coming on our show, talking to us about mediumship and channeling and uh, angels and earthbound spirits and so many amazing topics and really taking us one step closer to a human revolution. Thank you, AJ. This was one of the most amazing, if not the most amazing interview I've ever done. Thank you for your amazing questions. You are listening to My 7 Chakras. Go to my S-E-V-E-N chakras.com. Download your free gift, get inspired, and take action. Transform your life today.